Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 333, a male case study for doctors and the general public. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today, what we're going to do is pick Dr. Maupin's brain. Uh, We're going to ask her to demonstrate for us what she does every single day of her life when she gets to work and has new patient files on her desk, people that have found out about the work that she does, and they send in their data, their history, their list of complaints, uh, of symptom presentations, and their medical labs. And she sits down and goes through them in a particular rubric that she uses to make a determination whether they are qualified uh, applicants or candidates for the treatment that she gives. Quite often she says, no, you're not ready yet. You don't need this. You know, looking at your information, this is not where you need to be. You need to see this other doctor or the, go and find out about these other issues, uh, or you need to wait because your body is still functioning the way that it should. And when that isn't what she's able to say, then she says, come in and let's do pellets. And here is a treatment protocol that I have designed specifically for you. So we thought we'd show you how she does that because it's kind of a fascinating process. Uh, We are aware that there are any number of physicians and practitioners around the United States that do bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Uh, Our concern is not that they do it. Uh, Our concern is how they do it. We want them to do it. Well, we think people need to have it and we want it to be a more widespread, uh, a widely available medical procedure. But the trick isn't in inserting pellets in your body. That's really a pretty simple Mm -hmm. thing for any physician or nurse practitioner should be able to do easily. Mm -hmm. The trick is the proper diagnosis for where the imbalances in your hormones lie and how much needs to be given to you in order to restore them so that you have the maximum quality of good health for healthy aging. Mm -hmm. And and to maintain that, and to watch that, monitor that over repeated applications. And that is what Dr. Moffin specializes in. And, and so she offers training programs for other physicians who want to come and learn what she does. And they come not so much to learn how to put pellets in. I mean, they, they learn that too, but some of them come already knowing that. They come because of her expertise in diagnosing and in problem solving. And that's what you want your doctor to be able to do. So one word of, of caution uh, we're going to be talking about real patients, but you always protect the patient's confidentiality. So we, we don't have any identifiable data here that someone could recognize someone else uh, as a result of hearing. Uh, these are typical cases uh, selected from a pile of, of people that come in and their identifiers have been modified or removed. So we won't, we'll be talking today about uh, a male. Uh, this is a 46 year old Caucasian male. Uh, he's overweight. Uh, at 293, almost 300 pounds. He's five foot 10 inches tall with a body mass index of 43. Uh, His complaints primarily are, and we'll go through a litany of them in a moment, lack of any sex drive, difficulty thinking, increased belly fat, thinning hair, depression, and his joints ache. Uh, So he's trying to find out if uh, BRT, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, will help him. And so Dr. Maupin was consulted. This is a data from another physician that she has trained. And in the physician, the way, the way they do this, and it's actually like going back to school. Uh, the physician that she trained takes this data from the new patient and creates a diagnosis and a treatment plan. And then he sends it to Dr. Maupin and says, hey, can I have your feedback? Hey, if this were your patient, what would you suggest? How would you modify or would you what, what I've done? Uh, So she's going to walk us through that uh, today with this patient. So we're talking about a 46-year-old Caucasian male who's highly stressed. He's overweight. He's 5'10". Body mass index is 43. Uh, No sex drive. Has trouble thinking. A lot of belly fat, thinning hair, depression, and joint aches. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a fairly classic case, although young. Yeah, he's a little young for this. Usually Mm -hmm. people are uh, 55, average age is 55, 
for men to actually feel the effects of low testosterone and have low testosterone mm -hmm. and also have all the symptoms. But I find that in highly stressed people, especially you people... You run through it faster. You run through it faster. You get there faster mm -hmm. or earlier. Um, people who are overweight get there faster because their fat makes a lot of estrogen, which ba which binds up their testosterone. Mm -hmm. So in men, men make t estrogen as well. So when I see somebody who's really overweight, I generally assume their estrogen will be high and his mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So that actually increases what's called sex hormone binding globulin, which is a protein from the liver that binds up testosterone. So the more belly fat and the fatter you get, the less testosterone you have. So, I mean, if that's not a motivation for losing weight, I mean, it... So, so you're saying to uh, make sure I understand, mm -hmm. overall obesity, overall largeness, but particularly focus on, on uh, fat around the waist? Yes. Okay. Is much, it's, fat around the waist is much more dangerous and creates a lot more binding globulin okay. than just fat and everywhere. And that's a signal to you that they're converting, uh, th their testosterone is getting bound to estrogen and they're carrying too much estrogen. Right. And they're making, a male is which is, is not, not a negative thing yeah. for men. Uh -huh. And they also are making estrone, old man estrogen in their belly. So the fatter they get, the more estrogen they it's make, the cycle. less testosterone. So it's kind of like this spiral that just keeps going down unless we stop it somehow. Like when you go to the art museum and they have one of those things where you put the penny on the, on the, uh, and it rolls around and around and around, finally yes. goes down in the funnel. Yes. And it's down kind of the, the funnel. Way the, That's how it feels too for these guys. Yeah. They feel like, well, like they go on, the looking glass. they try to lose some weight. It's really hard to lose weight when you've already got low testosterone and high estrogen. So it makes, it's, doubly hard so they give up so they gain the weight back it gets worse they gain more i mean it really has to be intervened on with medication and with hormone replacement so in in this case when i and in the case of all my patients when i see i have a six page history form which has almost everything that i need on it and that's one of the things i use to determine whether i can help somebody which means they're a candidate for hormone or testosterone or hormone pellets is I'm looking at their history as well as then their laboratory. Mm -hmm. And it's a very extensive lab. It has 15 tests on it and their health tests, their hormone tests, and then their tests to see if I might be causing more problem. There are certain tests that I need to rule out other diseases and I need to rule out things that, that testosterone might make worse. Mm -hmm. So it has, that's why the panel is so big. Right. I'm not just trying to replace hormones. I'm trying to make somebody healthier. So, so it's not a matter of me coming in and say, you know what? I've lost my sex drive and I'm putting on some weight. Can I have pellets? No, it's not like that, but it, not in my office, but yeah. it is in many franchise um, operations, the operations yeah. that you see or shots. They, they do shots or pellets and they just say, oh yeah, well here, stick your finger here. We'll do a fast, a rapid testosterone test. They don't look at the active form of testosterone. Usually, um, if your total testosterone is less than 400, then your free testosterone is less than 129, then that's low testosterone and low free testosterone. Free is the active form of testosterone. And in this gentleman's case, his total testosterone at this age, I mean, he's only 46, was 229. So he wasn't making much total testosterone. So, so free in total. If you visualize a taxi cab in a, big, in a busy city, if the taxi cab has somebody in it already, it is not free. It is bound. Mm -hmm. And if it's an empty taxi, just the driver, it's available for use. Mm -hmm. You can get it. That is free testosterone. Yeah, and that's, you have that's to a have a certain amount of empty taxis running around your body to be available for the benefits that hormone replacement therapy can provide. If all your taxi cabs are full, you're in trouble. That's true. And you don't, even if this gentleman had a 700, a very good total, but he had a lot of fat and he had a lot of people in his taxi cabs because of it, then he's not feeling it. His free could have been 50, even though he has a very high total. So total doesn't tell the story. You have to get a free testosterone really to show what somebody feels and how, and what the condition is of their testosterone. So when it's really, when a testosterone's high, mm -hmm. normal, and a low free, then I need to get rid of that binding globulin. But you also don't just look at labs and computers. 
<laughs> you look at and listen to people. Right. I look at and their so symptoms. You, you ask them, what are your symptoms? And there are checklists in the book mm-hmm. that you've written, The Secret right. Female Hormone. For women, for there are. For all of the symptoms. There will be in our men's book as well. There will be in the well. men's book. Uh, and, and you then talk to them because one of your objectives in treatment is not balancing formulas according to uh, some predefined normal. Mm-hmm. Your objective in treatment is symptom alleviation. Yes. We want these symptoms to go away. So if I had numbers on a blood test versus right. symptoms, right. and I know those symptoms are related to hormone loss, then I'm going to treat until the symptoms go away rather than until I get to some arbitrary number. Yes. Because no one's the same. Arbitrary numbers come from mass studies of huge more, populations. More they I mean, FSH numbers are starting to change. You're going right. down from 3 to 2.3. is The, as a, the thyroid tests yeah. have, have been modified. made modified so that everyone's normal. Yeah. I mean, they just keep, the normal keeps going down so that our range is, is huge. So that's the kind of thing that we're dealing with. People who have symptoms but are in the normal range still should be treated. Mm-hmm. So I so when I have two factors, I trust the symptoms. I also talk to people and ask them a little bit more about that just to confirm that those symptoms are real or, or they really feel them all the time or part of the time, not just once every six years. You know, it, it has right. to be something that is bothering them chronically or m- most of the time in their lives. Mm-hmm. So when we looked at his symptoms, um, you were going to read my the symptoms right. so for me. This is a checklist that he filled out. And the, the first page is symptoms of hormonal deficiencies. And you have probably 40 items identifiable. Mm-hmm. And you go through and check which ones refer to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so his first one is lack of or decreased sex drive memory loss or trouble thinking, joint aches or arthritis, increased belly fat, and he has like four marks by uh-huh. that, uh, thinning hair, and depression. All of which are signs of low testosterone. So if he had come in with one symptom mm-hmm. and a normal testosterone, I really don't think that would have been, he would have been a candidate unless there were some other mitigating factors like he's already on testosterone and so his symptoms are better. So is there a number that you look for? If you got to say 30 here. If you're looking for at least I look three, for three. You're looking at five. I look for three. Three. But okay. in general. But this is all self-report. Yes, uh, it at is. At this point, it's it all is self-report. self-report. Okay. It is, but that's that's how we, that's how we um, diagnose. When people come in, they say, this is bothering me. And that's what we look, we start looking for. They call yeah. it a differential diagnosis. All the different things that could Eliminate cause that. Eliminate the things you couldn't be to right. see what's left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then you you have a box for exercise history, and there's probably ten items there, and he checks three of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a physical job, a physically demanding mm-hmm. job. He's very active at work. I exercise three times a week for fifty minutes or more. It's kind of hard to believe if he's as heavy as he says. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with the spiral. That's what happens. Yeah. You can still be exercising a lot. And I assume that at one point he had a lot of muscle mass. And now that muscle without testosterone is turning into more fat mass. Well, and he said and he the, just can't his get other one it. that he checks under exercise history is I lift weights three times a week. So he's 46. But my take from reading this and see if it fits with yours is that he's doing both cardio and weightlifting. Yes. So he's exercising more right, which is treatment. ideal and it's the hardest thing that i can't i have to try to get somebody better is to get them to exercise so he's already there Doing that, but he's not seeing the results because the hormones are not there right to support to build a foundation without without adequate free testosterone you mm-hmm. can't make muscle so you can exercise all day but you're going to be really tired when you're done mm-hmm. more tired than you were when you started because you're using up all your energy instead Instead of making muscle, mm-hmm. and you're just using up your blood sugar, so you're really so you're really tired. You burn it through, and you go back and drink a soda and eat a candy bar and God start forbid, over. Again. Yes, <laughs> stop the donut shop. Yeah, well, because, well, because your system's crashing. You right. worked out, so and you, you burned need all that stuff. You're weak. You're trembling. You got the shakes. You need a, a and sugar the wrong fix. answer is sugar. The yeah, right answer is protein. So that I mean, that's just because you're going to crash again during the day if you eat sugar. Then right. But in this instance, he's doing the work. He knows what to do. Mm-hmm. And he says in his diet, and I have a diet history, and he says he avoids carbohydrates. So I'm not sure how well he avoids carbohydrates or if he's really thought about it when he, when 
I see that. I ask them, I ask a patient to do a week or a month of a food diary and they have to write everything down and then they go, oh yeah, oh, meh. I'm eating that and that and that. You know, when you write it down, right. it's different than when you just think, oh, I'm limiting carbs. There's, there's that, that mindless eating that people do. They snack, they eat stuff that's bad for them and they don't count it. They don't even remember it. They don't register it. Yeah. But if you have to write it down, they remember it. Yeah. And then I can look at the list and go, well, that's that. You have to cut that out, cut that out, add this. You know, so, so I go over their diet with them as well. So you look at their exercise history and you ask them, to, what do you do here? You look at past surgeries. Uh, mm -hmm. What surgeries, if any, have they ever had? Because mm -hmm. that can, they, some people any. have bypass surgery right, where they're right. for, obesity for obesity. And, obesity. and that changes things because if you have that, that's an advantage for losing weight, but it's a disadvantage for absorbing nutrients. So, so often my patients who have had, had uh, some kind of obesity surgery can't absorb vitamins. So we have to give them to them in shots or, or in drops or some, some way to give them their nutrition. So that's what, I mean, I'm. So you want to just know about that because yes. it, it co complicates the problem if you don't know about it. Right. And if, and if I don't, and if they are absorbing nutrients and I put them on testosterone, they're not going to get better as fast. They're not going to get better because you may not know this, but vitamins are frequently enzymes and enzymes are what take your food and break it down and actually make it into something that you can use for energy or to build muscle, mm -hmm. hair, skin. So you basically need your vitamins slash enzymes to live. Okay. So that's an important thing. So you ask if these had any uh, previous testosterone replacement. This is not just this patient, any male patient. These, these are mm -hmm. forms that you get. Uh, have you used a t a pellet testosterone for gel before drugs before? Uh, you don't say shots. Uh, no, I don't say shots, but I ask if they've used anabolic steroids, which is not testosterone, but they're, they're male hormones. I do ask that in a different place. You do under habits, under habits, call, like and, do you smoke, do you drink? And I should have used, I actually, I should have shots on there. So that's a, that's a, a lapse in my whoop, whoop, list making. So okay. I'll have to change that. Right. But this, this particular patient has used, um, anabolic steroids, meaning they're court, they're adrenal steroids mm -hmm. that are not exactly testosterone, but they build muscle. And what they do is scar up, they scar up your adrenal. And oftentimes I have many patients who have used them and have damaged their adrenal. So it so looks like adrenal fatigue or adren they can have adrenal fatigue. He doesn't have adrenal fatigue, okay. but, not but yet. in many cases you keep watching for that. Testosterone doesn't do that. So but, would that but, suggest you then that he stopped using anabolic steroids? Yes, but I'll ask him about that when I when I w I will ask him or my protege will ask him right. about okay. how he's when he stopped using them, how much, how long he used them, and okay. what he used. More details needed. So you just make a note mm -hmm. of that, find out, and then preventive medicine. Uh, you have three things for men, colonoscopy in the last 10 years, urologist with the last year, and PCP visit within the last year. Right, and so. not everyone needs a urologist. Their PCP, their primary care can often do that. Mm -hmm. But colonoscopy after 45, if you have a positive family history, after 50, if you don't, then you should at least get one colonoscopy, and then they determine how often you need it after that. So then you go to medical illnesses, and you have a list of illnesses. Things like Addison's, adrenal fatigue, alcoholism, arthritis, blood mm -hmm. clots, BPH, uh, blood pressure. No, that's um, that's a benign, benign prostatic, prostatic enlargement. Yeah. Hypertrophy. I should have known that, yeah. <laughs> uh, cancer, depression, anxiety, diabetes, one, two, emphysema, fatty liver disease, glaucoma, heart attack, hemochromatosis, hepatitis, high blood pressure, ADD. Mm -hmm. now, that's an interesting... Well, ADD is something that... Um, that's a sign to me that oftentimes people are wired backwards, meaning they, yeah. when I give them, that's not in the hormonal world, but in the other medication world, if I give somebody, um, a, a diet pill, right. okay. That has, that is essentially an ADD medicine or an amphetamine. It does not speed up their metabolism. It just makes them really calm. Right. So I need to know that before I give yeah, medications my, my to son, them has that and his body reacts exactly the opposite to Stratera, which is one of the ADD drugs mm -hmm. or to Benadryl. Mm -hmm. that, Benadryl that gets most people, do. people go to sleep. 
and oh, deers get hyper. He invented drill so he could go to sleep on a plane mm -hmm. or something. He's popping the whole way. Yeah. I mean, he can't turn it off. Right, and that's exactly what happened. So I need to know, I need right. to have an advance warning of how they're going to respond to any other medication that I offer them. And that's a very good example because about 4% of the population of the United States, at least, is diagnosed as ADD. And mm -hmm. we don't know what the undiagnosed level is. I think it's probably more than is. that. Well, yeah, that's what I was just... We don't know what the undiagnosed mm -hmm. level is. And, and if they're on the medications, right. you know, that we ask for their medication. So if they're on that medication, it speeds up their metabolism of their hormones, too. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a trigger for them to go, oh, yeah, I'm on that medication. I forgot. And they, because they do forget, and that then if they're on the medication, then I have to increase the dose of the pellets over uh, over a certain level just because they're on that medication. So, so there are more illnesses that you list, and, and some of them are intriguing to me. I mean, you, you need to know what about intrigues you. Um, things like uh, narcolepsy or osteoporosis, uh, history of head injuries, schizophrenia, restless legs. Uh, epilepsy, Which one do you apnea. want to know about? <laughs> I, I'm just curious about the correlation, if there is any, between those and low testosterone. Yeah, there's a lot. There's correlation between some of those things. Hemochromatosis means that you store iron, you absorb more iron than other people, mm -hmm. and that you store it in your tissues, and it acts like a heavy metal. It's a mm -hmm. it's a genetic problem, and it's rarely diagnosed until it's damaged your liver or your eyes or your brain or something else. So it could kill you if it's it, not. Yes, treated. it could, but. But when I give testosterone, that also increases your absorption of iron, which is great if you're anemic. But if you already right. absorb you already too much iron, yeah. then we have to put you, if you still want and need testosterone, we have to put you on a schedule of of therapeutic phlebotomies, which is blood donation right. or blood getting rid of a unit of blood here and there. Right. And we do that for other things. But for hemochromatosis, it's life-saving. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we find that, a whole family is then diagnosed so, because so we we look for that by doing a ferritin level. So, but the, the the point I guess I want to make about all this list of illnesses in checking their background, their family history, their personal background, you often find other things that may have gone unrecognized mm -hmm. or untreated, or you find things that would complicate and compound your treatment protocol in, right. in negative ways. So right. Should, so yeah. I, I want to troubleshoot and avoid it before it happens. Yes. So by finding these things out, and I, I usually test for one test for each abnormality, mm -hmm. and then I can tell by the test or by their history if they have that. Well, and a lot of people, like I grew up in an alcoholic family, one of the things we know about adult children of alcoholics mm -hmm. is they rarely know family histories. You know, because they all live that mm -hmm. family life. Or if you're know. adopted, you may not know it either. Or if you're either. adopted or what have you. And so the, the filling this out, for me to fill this out, 90% of the stuff would be blank, mm -hmm. but it perhaps shouldn't be. Well, that's why I do, so why I do several do fallback plans. Well, I mean, a family history is only as good as the person that they gave you the, the history. history. Yeah, exactly. And so so when I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm looking for several different pieces of information, clues. Right. To me, this is just... Like looking at a mystery show, mm -hmm. looking at Poirot or, or, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's not entertainment. It's my job, but it is entertaining to me to go through and go, Oh, I found this. I found this. I found this. And they don't, somebody doesn't know they have that. And then it's even more fun to fix it. Okay. So, <laughs> so then the next category of, of symptoms on the list is social history. Mm -hmm. And he marked a couple of them, but, but again, there are a couple here that I'd like to talk to you about <laughs> mm -hmm. that he didn't mark. Mm -hmm. uh, I've completed my family. Why would you ask that question? Well, because if I'm, if I'm 46 and I'm coming in, I think maybe. And I if you have a 20 year old wife and you, and you want to have babies, uh -huh. then if I give you testosterone, it's almost, it's almost like a birth control. In fact, they use testosterone for birth control in some countries. It's not, you shouldn't, you shouldn't use it for birth control, but it does decrease the sperm count. If you use it at the levels that we're so using libido it. libido improvement and sperm improvement are not the same thing at all. No. You're, you're if not. you're making your own testosterone, right. uh -huh. then you make more sperm. But if I give you testosterone, right. then it shuts down your production of your own testosterone and sperm. Okay. Which is why some countries use it for birth control. Right. All right. So he marked, I'm married and in a committed relationship and I'm sexually active. 
Uh, there are other carriers. I want to be sexually active. I'm heterosexual. I'm uh, homosexual, homosexual, bisexual. Well, part of that has to do with, I, I don't want to say your wife to a male uh -huh. if he has a partner. I don't, so I don't want to, want to I want to be to, sensitive to his situation. And right. I don't want to talk about, I don't want to throw out heterosexual issues oh, so it's not so to much someone a question as a, uh, an interactive and communication. No, I mean, question. everybody, I mean, everybody is born one way, one way or another or right. both. Right. And I just want to be sensitive to who they are exactly. and to know their situation and know, I mean, to be, to be homosexual is stressful. Yes. I mean, it's more stressful than being heterosexual in our society. In our society. So, yeah. so for, for me to, I have to appreciate that stress and that in everybody's to, going through. Yes. And I, I mean, I'm not a counselor, but I learned a lot from you and I need to make sure that, that I'm speaking in the right way. I don't want to be as, as blunt and brain dead as many people are when they're That's talking right. to I a patient. I always say, I don't want to be accidentally ignorant. I don't mind being ignorant, but I don't want to be accidentally ignorant, you know? Yeah. So if I'm I don't want to assume crude, anything. That's okay. You know, you'll have to deal it's with it. It's really that. not medical. It's really about how I relate and, to Well, them. and it's about your desire to see the patient, not the data. Right. You want to see the data, but you want to see the person. Mm -hmm. And you spend time with them. I mean, you spend mm -hmm. an hour, hour and a half going through all this, mm -hmm. and then if they come in, and they may never come an in. hour, hour and a half with them mm -hmm. before you ever do anything for right. them. Okay. Diet history. I eat anything I want. Uh, I don't eat much, and I gain weight anyway. And he checked three things. I'm gluten sensitive. I limit my carbs, and I have a high protein diet. And that, that's great for what what his lab what shows. His, okay. So, so so that's consistent with what his lab. Right. All right. Well, let's talk about that then. So uh, you you get the symptom list. You go through the checklist. Your mind is already starting to. Uh, I can almost see. I can almost see him and without minuses. seeing him. Right. I already have kind of an image, and then I, sometimes I'm surprised by the image that I have mm -hmm. when I see somebody face to face. This gentleman I'll never see face to face. Right. I'm just advising his physician on how to do this. Right. So, uh, so I first I go back. Usually the last test is the first test that I look at, and that's uh -huh. testosterone. And his free testosterone um, should be over 129. His free free testosterone was. 51. That's extremely low. Mm -hmm. That means the active part of his testosterone is half of what it should be. And I wouldn't expect him to have a sex drive. I wouldn't even expect him to, to be able to have an erection with that. I mean, if he does, that's good. His blood flow is good and his exercise has helped him. So if you were treating him, you would increase his level of testosterone. Would you also suggest to him an ED pill or would you wait to see if the testosterone alone would solve He didn't problem? express any need for an ED pill. Oh, so, so he has good blood assumption. flow. Okay. He has good blood flow. So he, that hasn't hit him yet. Okay. But he needs the, he needs testosterone for many other reasons and one is sex drive. Mm -hmm. So we look at lipids, mm -hmm. which may not be, um, which may not be primarily uh, what we're looking at, but testosterone lowers LDL. When we give testosterone in the pellet form, let me rephrase that, it lowers LDL. If you take a shot, it increases LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. So one of the reasons I don't use shots is that. So this is kind of an extensive workup, and I want to attend to it properly. Mm -hmm. So we may have to pick this up um, next week. Okay. So I, w I want to give the proper attention to how I look at the blood work. We'll come back next week and we'll talk specifically about the remainder of the lab tests that Dr. Moffin looks at using this example of a male. Mm -hmm. We also have an example of a female that we'd like to, to work through as well. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where that goes. So thank you for listening and hopefully you'll come back. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.